J'ai mes pères, Jonathan Scroggins. Vous regardez un documentary French New Wave. I'm Marian Lanz. I'm happy to be talking to you today. I'm the curator of film and video here at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. I have uh, been probably doing this for 26 years. Uh, we show films at the museum, about 200 films a year in our Brown Auditorium. It's a very diverse selection and uh, lots of French films. So it's, I'm glad you asked me to talk about the French New Wave. How exactly did I develop an interest into the French New Wave style of film? I was looking for a vehicle to showcase my directing skill. A writer by the name of Marcus Guillory turned me onto the script, Pas Son I was interested in the story, but he was emphasizing French New Wave. I'm thinking French New Wave, French Noir, same thing, uh, big deal. He was like, nah, <laughs> it's not. I also truly don't believe French New Wave is actually a particular style of film because when you trace the roots of French New Wave, it's not rooted in a particular style of cinematography. I think sometimes we get caught up in the technique behind it. We don't realize sometimes stuff is defined by the time period. French New Wave was more about the social issues and anxiety of it. This is a new generation that's post-World War II. They're trying to express themselves and this is the height of the Cold War era. So, you know, there's a level of repression these students face and these filmmakers were faced and how their art was viewed. So, French New Wave was more of a iconoclastic resistance against the traditional method of cinematography and of French culture. It was a really galvanizing moment in film history. Uh, the filmmakers who got involved in forming the movements, it wasn't ever very formal because that's not their style, in the 1950s and 1960s had really come from watching American movies. They would go to screenings, they formed film societies, which is a model for how people watch film even through the present time, and they would talk about film. They were also not happy with the traditional style that they saw in the movies coming out in the theaters in Paris. The whole style I realized it's something I, I knew nothing about. So I started studying it. And as I started studying it and learning about the Young Turks and how they changed America's cinema from France, I was really intrigued. I realized I had been really spoiled because my knowledge of film as it is today lends from the French New Wave style, especially me being a music video director, could be French New Wave style because of the jump cuts and the rapid editing. The reason why I believe the French New Wave has stood the test of time for so long is because when you think of, it's like with anything that's rooted in youth culture, it's always gonna be, it's always gonna find a way to reinvent itself and find relevancy in the present day. With French New Wave, you're looking at a style of cinema that's Pretty much, it gave us so many great classic movies that are current now, like Fight Club references it a lot. Shit. Don't answer me, why do people think that I'm you? I think you know. Because it's a very disjointed story that you may not believe the actual storyteller in the movie. So they went in a very original and fresh direction. They wrote for a publication called the Cahier du Cinéma, which still exists today and is a magazine of film reviews and film criticism uh, that has been very influential. So a lot of these uh, uh, filmmakers came from writing about film and watching film to say, I want to make films in a very original style, and uh, that is uh, really how they came together. Oh. I have absolutely learned as along with the students because a lot of you guys are turning me on to things that I didn't know. I thought it would be a great opportunity as I was discovering French New Wave to also discover it with the students for that very purpose. I realized that I can't learn everything. And when you do things as a group, other people find things that you didn't find or raise ideas that you never thought of. I feel like French New Wave was able to teach American filmmakers how to tell stories that are cohesive yet disjointed, which is kind of an oxymoronic statement. You look at how traditionally American filmmakers, much like American books, where it's beginning, middle, end, and you have a set protagonist, set antagonist, and a rising action. Whereas with, whereas with a movie that re references French New Wave very heavily, like Pulp Fiction. Don't you hate that? I hate what? Uncomfortable silences. It's pieces of a story that involves people who are interacting with each other, not physically in front of each other, but their actions affect the next person, the next panel, or in the next scene. 
or in some cases, days later. One aspect of the French New Wave uh, that they that was coined by American film critic Andrew Saras is what's called the auteur theory or the author theory. You know, directors from Spike Lee to Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese. What they brought to editing was a breaking of the rules. Whatever books that said this is how it had to be done, they burned them. Breathless is too hip for me. I, I, I come from Lower East Side, I'm an Italian-American guy. It was, it's too beat, beatnik. It's like, you know, bohemian. It's too cool. I liked it. I don't know what the hell was happening in it. Um, any number of women directors, Asian filmmakers, Latin American filmmakers, uh, all doing films that are uh, distinctly their personal style. Uh, Godard is my favorite so far. When I watched Truffaut did 400 Blows, and I watched several other films, uh, 400 Blows is a beautiful cinematic film. A really good story if you allow yourself to get into it, but every frame is a beautiful image. Totally different from when you watch Breathless. But what I like about Godard is he was a, he was an asshole. And maybe he wasn't, but that's how I interpret him. My favorite French New Wave director, is, he's actually slightly post-French New Wave. His name is Jean-Pierre Meville, and he directed the classic movie Le Samurai. And that was a movie that was drastically different because you see the name the samurai think this is a this is gonna be a sword fight movie and really it was a story of a hitman and the way it depicted his life it was very sterile he was a very subtle character and the way it was shot it was like here is a man who is purposefully taking himself away from society his life is very much minimalist and it depicts the film is shot very minimalist too there isn't much enriched color in it the audio of it is not very muddled it's very conversational it's almost like the characters don't believe he is really real. And I felt that's why I enjoyed the movie so much. The phone book here, just for a little show and tell, uh, is my absolute uh, favorite of the French New Wave directors. He started out uh, uh, around the same time that Godard made Breathless. Truffaut made The 400 Blows, Les Quatre Sans Coup, and uh, went on to do a whole cycle of films with Jean-Pierre Léo, and it was kind of an autobiographical character uh, named Antoine Douanel. This is uh, in his 20s, but 400 Blows, Antoine Douanel is a, a young boy. He leaves his family, he gets into a lot of trouble in school. The style of filmmaking, this was a black and white film uh, with really a great soundtrack. French New Wave uh, filmmakers were interested in jazz and pop music and uh, just very unconventional styles of, of filming. Uh, there was handheld, kind of mimicked silent film, I would say, in a particular way. He was a maverick, and in him being a maverick, he had a specific way that he was doing his films. He would change filmmaking the way that he saw it. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I like the fact that he was so focused in on the on telling the story and it being fresh and it being from young filmmakers that on set he would feed his dialogue to the, the actors and try to capture in the moment. So he put them in not sets but then they would be in realistic areas in France shooting. When it comes to movies, filmmakers like Michael Bay and Quentin Tarantino, I think people are just genuinely intrigued at the way Quentin Tarantino has used dialogue to tell stories in a sense where his movies are very dialogue heavy, which is like a lot of French New Wave movies where, you know, you do see these long periods of conversation between characters. And I feel like people in today's modern cinema where we're all big boom, boom, blast, explosion, this here and there, you know, everything's a box office movie. We do need something that says, okay, let's focus on the actual character. Let's develop them through not their actions, but through their vocalization of their feelings. I think you could, uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Something that you think is a mistake might not be a mistake. I think there, there's a lot to be said for uh, the spontaneity of filmmaking. You might want to try shooting in black and white, because certainly <laughs> a lot of those films were, in, were black and white, and that's not maybe something that students do that much these days. Uh, you know, I think just kind of have fun with it. Make your actors feel comfortable. I don't think the new wave directors put a lot of money into sets and production design and art direction. I think there is a real natural feel, so I would encourage you to just shoot with the resources that you have available to you, which, is, which are words to live by for anybody making a film early in the career as well. The impact the French New Wave has uh, made on the modern film industry is everything. It makes the film, the, the, the viewer part of the, uh, part of the film and the fact that in some of these films they break that fourth wall. And so with that, I think it made the way that the pictures were being made, that 
hey, we got to stick to this line, told this line, to people being able to imagine. And now you can see all different types of films, all different types of ways, and they can break all different types of rules. It, it, it's, it's in the fabric of American filmmaking, and you can feel that. Many times, you know, you watch a Quentin Tarantino movie and say, okay, this guy isn't exactly right in his mind because you listen to his dialogue and he rambles or he doesn't act very coherently. And I think that's something that he adapted from French the way that was very, that was very unique and I felt like it was very purposeful because it helped him as a storyteller because Quentin Tarantino is very heavy handed sometimes. And I think with Michael Bay, when I think of Bad Boys, when I think about it, it just, there was a level of the comedy that they used was very, this is awkward on purpose. Like, you know, some of their jokes amongst each other was awkward. You could tell that the Duragonist, the young lady in the movie, she was like, okay, these guys are kind of weird. Their friendship isn't like how I associate normal male friendships. But hey, they're great filmmakers. And I really feel like, you know, due to the French New Wave, it allowed them to become who they are. French New Wave is unique, innovative. It's for gangsters. Gang, gang. Avant garde. Creative. Rebellious. Freedom. Not the norm! Gang, gang! I wish I could have been like, French New Wave is rebellious, and then somehow just 